Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be going over how to discern whether a chart is putting in a bottom versus a maybe even a dead cat bounce, or as far as swing trading goes in general, how do we know a good place to go long? How's it going? This is Patrick of Trading with Prime. So I'll just kind of get into it. Uh, a question came out today, and so I thought I would share with all of you guys. Uh, that way I'm not answering the question for just one person, but in general, how can we help each other grow our trading account and how can we learn different tools and different tricks and methods? And so I kind of get this question a lot, um, and, and and so I'm not I'm not picking on this one time. I'm just, I get this question a lot. Really, how do I see whether I think a pattern is coming into some sort of bottom uh, because there is a fine line between trying to pick the bottom and actually playing the chart as we see it and hey, this might be a good swing setup. And so I've, I've had my eye on QS for quite a while. I've been in and out of QS. I've been stopped out of QS before. Uh, I've had some success with it. So this particular chart, I'm going to zoom out to the larger time frames. And so this particular chart is kind of a falling knife scenario, except for it's not really, it's not really cutting through butter falling kind of a knife. It's it's kind of curling and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. The very first thing I do when I look at a chart of a company that I'm watching, I actually start with the hourly chart and then the daily chart and then I go into lower time frames. For purposes purposes of this video, I'm going to share with you guys starting with the 5 minute time frame because sometimes we can see things develop on a lower time frame even though it's rare that I heart, you know, I hardly ever use anything lower than an hourly chart. For this purpose of this chart, it was a 5 minute. So I'm going to kind of get into it and, and and kind of put the pieces together. And and honestly, you guys can use whatever methods you want, but this is how I do it. And uh, this is what I found success in, in doing it this way. So for starting out with the five minute chart to, to really see these patterns that are on the screen in the light gray slash white, you have the, the um, uh, market when the market is open in the dark gray, you have the after hours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of show you what I see. And for this chart, you saw a little bit of buying over here. Now, at this point back here, which I forget what day this is, I think it's Wednesday, why wasn't this the bottom? Why did the chart then sell off to break out that low? I don't really have an answer for that. All I know is that the chart did break out below that low, right? So then it, it it's kind of raises a, an eyebrow like, okay, this is clearly in a downtrend. Where did this turn tides? And I'm gonna show it to you right here. I'm gonna draw a line going down. You have a downtrending line on a five minute chart downtrending line and what you see right here is you see this day which was I believe Monday it fell at the open and then it consolidated and then it kind of had a little bit of a relief rally into the next day it fell again found support and something I want to show you guys this is something to kind of keep an eye on you have consolidation in the prior day so often what happens is it, it can be hard for a chart or a price to fall through previous consolidation now don't take that to the extreme because this is a five minute chart. So we do know charts don't like to respect lower time frames. They actually respect higher time frames and work their way down. But things that turn, tides that turn, can turn on a lower time frame and work their way up to a higher time frame. So then you had this day, it had a hard time getting through the previous days, um, previous days low or the previous days consolidation, turn around and then took off. Once it broke out and then came back and back tested, that was an indication. Now, people could have seen this right here and said, you know what, I don't think it's going to go below the, the prior day's low. That could be an entry. Um, a higher probability uh, success as far as trading goes, higher probability, lower risk trades are waiting for the actual breakout or better yet, wait for the back test. And if you don't get the back test and it takes off without you, oh, well, there's always another trade around the corner. The following day, which is today, Price opened and immediately started climbing higher. This kind of confirms, in general, this kind of confirms this overall pattern. Will this morph into something more? I don't know yet. We don't know as traders. What we have to do is we have to use our stop losses. Put your stop loss at appropriate levels. If you wanted, in this trade, if you wanted to put your stop loss down here and your entry was right here, that's okay. Maybe you raise your stop loss up a little bit, depending on when you when and where you got in. Now, if you haven't gotten into this trade yet, you could consider getting into it, but let me go to a higher time frames and I'll kind of start to paint a picture for you on maybe or maybe not. We don't know if it's a good idea or not yet. 
So here we have the hourly chart. Now we're, we've gone from the five minute, now we're on the hourly. Looking at the hourly chart, I see the same similar kind of pattern. The only difference is that what happened yesterday should have been a clear signal that anyone who was long would have been stopped out at the support level of 46.13 around that price. That's a good area if the price falls below that area to get out of the trade because we're wrong in the trade. In this case, it should have continued selling off. And this is where I like to say, what should have happened, because we took out this low right here, what should have happened is the chart should have sold off, but it didn't, it recovered, which was your second or third reason of, you know what, maybe this is a bottom. Let me clear that off. So just, and this is just, of course, looking at the hourly chart. I'm gonna zoom out again and show you a little bit more. Now this re this is to remain being seen as far as, as far as patterns on a chart, you, you see how the chart is kind of curling here, and I'll, I'm gonna go to another chart and show you an example of this, but for now, see how it's starting to curl a little bit? That's kind of what you wanna see. You want this to form into some sort of uh, cup, you know, some sort of U pattern. This is what I'm, I look for. I like to look for these U patterns. Now, you could wait for this to actually build up momentum to the buy side if you don't wanna jump in it too early. Now, at, at a certain point, you could say, you know what, any higher low, I'm gonna go ahead and take that trade, putting my stop loss, below the previous pivot low. I hope that wasn't fast and confusing. So, and then here's another thing I wanted to point out. You can see the chart right here, back here in on 1125, it had a hard time getting up through this area. It pulled back and then eventually broke out of that area. You could actually draw a line going straight across and now you can see why buyers showed up right here. That should have been the low. In fact, the type of momentum, which is what you want, you want you want heavy and fast momentum to the downside into an area like this where there's previous consolidation and where this was a previous breakout area. That's what you're kind of looking for as far as the dead cat bounce. As soon as it started making this pattern, lower highs, lower highs, lower lows, that tells you that, you know what, this support probably isn't gonna hold. You don't want the price to keep coming back to the support. If it does, it's most likely not gonna hold, which you saw in this day, and then you saw pre, um, uh, recently a couple of days ago. What we're doing is we're dissecting the chart, right? We're just gonna pick through it and, and see if we can come up with things, see, see what kind of um, things that we can come up with to help either the bullish or bearish case. But you have to be careful because your mind will play a trick on you. Your mind sometimes likes to see the likes to only look at the bullish things, especially if you're long in the trade. What we have to try to do as traders is be neutral in the trade. It doesn't matter to us whether it's going to go up or down. We just want to take the breakout or the breakdown. Either way it goes, we don't really care about the company. Well, I'm speaking for myself here. I don't personally care much about the company other than if it's a company we all know, then that means there might be more volume or more volatility. Okay, let me get off of that. So this is the hourly chart. You can kind of see it's curling here. It's having a little bit of trouble getting through the moving averages, which is to be expected. I would expect some sort of consolidation. Maybe we'll come all the way back down here to 4349 or 4350. And then we'll maybe we'll put in some sort of higher low and continue higher. If not, and it starts trading lower below this below this point, then you know you're you're stopped out in the trade. There is something to be said about this downtrend right here, which I just highlighted on the screen. That is definitely a downtrend, so you have to be mindful of that and you have to watch out for that. Now let me go out to the daily chart. And I hope I'm not talking too fast. I want you guys to kind of see what I saw and why I chose to take this trade. Um, and I actually have to give credit to Sav and the trading group. Uh, he he was the one who actually went long on this first. He saw it before I did, and I went and looked at the chart, and I did the dissection, which I'm doing with you guys right now. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to get into this trade or back into the trade. So here we are on the daily chart. Now, as far as the daily chart goes, there really isn't any evidence that there's any sort of bottom right here. What this looks like is another lower high compared to all these days in here. This doesn't really look like a bottoming pattern. It doesn't look like much on the daily chart. But I'm gonna point out something here. This is, uh, or a few things actually. So for one, you have you have this candle right here where the market it ran up and it ran up to this point right here. And if I drew a line going all the way across and then I expanded it a little bit because there's consolidation in this area right here, that is an area where, where the chart had a hard time getting, or the price had a hard time getting through that area. Because of that reason, price on the way down is also gonna have a hard time, or in theory, is gonna have a hard time getting back through that area, which is still 50-50 chances that that price does fall through this area, but it's not as likely because there was previous consolidation on the chart. Okay, second reason as far as the daily chart goes is I'm gonna go over to Fibonacci. It's just, there are tools that you can use. Uh, if you like to use the Fibonacci, you know, I don't, 
Some people don't like to use it. Some people do. And sometimes I will use it in a case like this where you had, and of course this is relative to where you draw the first point from, but in, in a case like this where it had a run up, a massive run up, and I'm gonna give you percentages on that run up just so we can kind of, see, everyone can kind of see it. From the from the low all the way up here to the high, it's 100 or it's 809%. So far we've given back 69% uh, of that. So there's something to be said that we're in the range of a of a Fibonacci retracement of around 75 to 78%. Fibonacci doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be uh, to the penny or you know to the dollar amount. It just has to be close. It, as far as from my experience anyway, it's just gotta be close. Um, and we don't even know how many other traders are actually using it. So what we want is a lot of traders to see the same things that we see and that would kind of be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Let me get rid of this drawing. So that was one of the reasons. This the, the first one was a consolidation. Second reason was the Fibonacci. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to a, uh, a weekly time frame and kind of show you what I saw on the weekly chart. So on a weekly chart, this is the thing is sometimes we don't know what what which chart is the is the company playing. Is it playing the five minute, the 10 minute, the, the 30, the hourly, the daily, the weekly? I would say this, we have to be traders on all time frames. We have to understand trading on all time frames. That's that's completely relevant. A couple things I want to point out on this. You had this huge day back here, which was on this was the week of 831. I, I don't know when that I think it was this this previous 831. You had this huge massive green candle, right? And then you had consolidation. All of this consolidation on the weekly time frame is all inside bars to eventually you have this bump up in price. And so what if we did, if we drew this going across here, it's just technical analysis, right? Now, if you were patient and waited through that entire process or actually wait for the breakout and then go ahead and go long, you can see that this was quite the run up. I don't think anyone was expecting this kind of a run up. But one thing I do know is that because of how far and fast price moved, what, what did we say, 800%? Uh, so here it's almost a thousand percent percent on the weekly time frame. It ran incredibly high. Because of that, there is under the hood an already built-in. Uh, what word can I use? There's already a built-in characteristics of this chart to really run. Once it once it consolidates down to a certain price level and it starts to curl, and then it eventually might run even harder. So with this thing up to a thousand percent pullback. On this, it almost looks like it's like a 50% retracement. Let's do the, do it on this chart. Let's see here. It's like a almost a thousand going up to the upside, and then the pullback. Same thing. About 70% pullback. Okay. So, more importantly, on the weekly time frame, there's something I want you guys to see. You can see this candle right here where there was a gap. Okay. This is on a weekly time frame, meaning the market closed on a Friday and then it opened on a Monday. When it opened that Monday, it fell all the way down, retraced all the way down, halfway down this candle and then rallied all the way back up here, pulled back a little bit and closed, right? So this area by itself, gaps can act as support and resistance. So there, there is a reason why the chart found some sort of support here because it has in the past, it's, it's, it's characteristics of the market. It found support there before. It had a hard time getting through that area. So we know that there's also resistance there, supply and demand. So that is the, I don't know how what, uh, somebody keep track with me. That is the, one of the last reasons why I believe that there personally would be some sort of buying in this area. Now, this is where we have to take trading and say, you know what? We could be wrong in this trade. Absolutely. And where, at what price do we know that, hey, I got to move my stop loss to this area? In my opinion, that price is at the low of the previous can or of this week's candle, which is, I'll give you the price. The low is forty dollars sixty two cents. So let's put the stop loss at thirty. Or uh, let's we if we're trading options, this might be a little bit different. For me, I trade options, so I keep a little bit tighter of a stop loss. But you don't have to. Like let's say you buy one share of this at forty bucks, you could put the stop loss at thirty nine dollars fifty cents. You know that if price gets down to this level again, around forty dollars eighty one cents. If price starts to head there again, it's much it's much more likely that we have not found a bottom and that we are gonna go a low, but not just low, we're gonna go a lot lower. We could even go all the way down to 34 bucks again. So I hope this helped. Um, do me a favor, leave a comment underneath the video if you, if you have any questions. If you gain value out of this video, feel free to hit the like button. And again, if you guys want, if you have any more questions, go ahead and reach out to me. You can direct message me or under the video. 
and I would love to uh, do videos like this um, uh, to help out as many traders as we can. That's it for this video. I know it was kind of long. I appreciate your guys' time and hopefully that helped.